Tell us a little bit about Dessalines and what a contemporary history is leaving out. We're getting wrong about it. Uh, and another important thing about Dessalines, can you explain this uh, myth, not myth, but the kind of story about him being the butcher of whites? So first off, who is Dessalines? Okay. And first of all, Jean-Jacques Dessalines is born in 1758. Uh, he's basically a field slave his whole life who was brutally beaten from the womb to the beginning of the Haitian Revolution. That's the guy with the hat behind you in the That's red. The guy in the all red. Yes. His only saving grace is that he has an aunt named Toya, according to you know what the story is, is that her name was Toya. His aunt Toya is the woman who taught him how to fight so well. So she would actually give him training in how to fight and how to do hand-to-hand -hand combat and make him, you know, she would like basically teach him how to fight. So he was known to be a very good fighter. He was very, very rebellious. He was so rebellious, he used to pride himself on taking off his shirt and showing other more, uh, you know, relaxed black mulattoes the lashes that he took. Like Denzel and Glory. Like Denzel and Glory, yeah. A friend of mine was on that was in that movie. He's yeah. in that scene. He used to pride himself on having people see the lashes on his back. He was enslaved by mostly whites most of his life, and the last he was in, the last slave master he had is the one that he's whose name he takes was a free person of color. I don't know if he was mulatto or black, but he was a free person of color named Dessaline, and that person used to brutally beat him. And he took the name Dessalin, and from then on, he would be known as Jean Jacques Dessalin. Toussaint Louverture was born on the Breda plantation, and his name was actually Toussaint Breda. It's not until the beginning of the revolution that he takes the name Louverture. I actually have a theory about that because a lot of people don't know this. Mm -hmm. The word Louverture in, is the opening. Louverture yeah. is the actual name of the first chapter of the Quran, the Fatiha, the opening. Interesting. Yeah. Look at, look at, look at uh-oh, here comes the numerology. Well, you know, well <laughs> I just I just wanted to add, in case people get confused, Toussaint is his last name. His first name is Dominique. Right. L'Overture is a nickname. It means the opener, the one yep. who makes a way. Yep. Just so it's clear. That's correct. Okay, you were saying? Yes. That's yeah. That's that's uh that's by the way the whole over true thing is I have a theory about that we're not gonna talk about that now we have to do a whole show about as that. long as numbers aren't involved no <laughs> it's gonna be a show about the role of Islam in the Haitian Revolution oh okay. and Look. the aliens the aliens oh my God if you hotep out on us they I'm built the citadel there. Pascal if you start doing five letters e i e i I'm I'm, I'm not gonna go there but anyway they built the citadel the aliens. <laughs> I won't, I, won't, I won't go there, but anyway. <laughs> Haitian aliens. For for the for the champagne room, I will try to find that video of the dude explaining why old McDonald had a farm is satanic to children. But anyway, so back to Dessaline. So <laughs> Dessaline, Dessaline is uh, you know, basically a a, a, a field slave who was brutally beat. And at, and at uh, 33 years old, we have ceremony Bwakaima, which is a ceremony where you have Bukman who you know, gathers all of the Africans in uh, at, at, in uh, in the mountains, and he basically tells them that you know the God of the whites wants you wants you to have misery, our God wants you to have justice, and a week after that, the fire and burning plantation starts all over the north and the Haitian, the insurgency that becomes the Haitian Revolution that starts. And Dessalines basically at that point, he's like, I'm never going to be a slave again. And that in 1793, when General Sontonax basically declares liberty, he's him and all blacks are free. And he's already starting to fight. And he moves up the ranks very quickly because he's such a good fighter. Mm -hmm. So that's how Dessalines gets his military experience. Yes. Excellent. Well, he, Dessalines, both Dessalines. And Louverture start fighting, start the Creole black generals start fighting for the Spanish. Because remember, 
the Spanish and the British want to, because France, because the, the left side of the island of Hispaniola, which which is called Saint Domingue, pre-revolutionary Haiti, Haiti, was the most valuable colony in the Western Hemisphere. It was more valuable than all thirteen colonies together. That's why it used to be called the Pearl of the Antilles. So best, both the Spanish and the British are like, yo, we can take this from the French. And the Spanish jump in first and say, listen, all black Creole men, we're not going to free all you Negroes. We want these Africans to keep working. But you black Creole men, you come fight with us. We'll give you freedom. We'll give you a nice crib. You might get some land. You get some Spanish chicks you can hang out with. Nice. We make it nice for you. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so they're like, word, 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 back. So they get down with the Spanish. But the Spanish, this is the key. What's the distinction? Both Dessalines and Loverture and the black Creole generals are born on the island. 65% of the black people in pre-revolutionary Haiti were born in Africa. Mm -hmm. They were the lowest of the low of the slaves. They were even lower than Dessalines. Right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So the black Creole generals are like, word, okay, we, we'll go fight for Spain. We can get all these other Africans. We can, well, we can, well, we, we've been with, because by the way, there's a little fact. In pre-revolutionary Haiti, by law, you can find this in Carolyn Fick's book, The Making of Haiti, only free people of color could be slave catchers. Free people of color blacks or free people of color mulattoes. So these Negroes are like, oh, we've been, we've been waxing these Africans' ass for years. We can handle that, no problem. So they go fight for Spain, and they're fighting against whatever ragtag, the royalists, don't forget this is during the French Revolution, so the royalists, the king's army is, is there, or the Republican army, the Republican army is there, so they're like, okay, we're going to fight the Republican army, the French Republican army, and all of these rebellious Negroes who are burning plantations, you can't handle them, no problem, we've been kicking their ass for years. So the black and mulatto generals some of the, so now the, some of the mulatto generals are like well, fight for Spain really, okay? Or they're like maybe we can deal with the British, because uh, what happens is 1793, freedom is given out, and a lot of the mulattoes don't want the Africans to be free. Right. Why? Because they, they hate them more than anyone. Because they're the bottom of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. The mulattoes are like okay, we can deal with. The mulattoes were like, okay, this, you know, Loverture is black, but at least he's a free person of color like us. We can do business with him. All right, he wasn't educated in France. His French is kind of, you know, horrible. Yeah, his parents were born in Africa, but he's been free a long time. He did some good business. Yeah, Dessalines, yeah, he's a savage brute, but he can fight. We're not going to mess with him. He might beat our ass. Like, I don't like that bastard at all, but we can handle Dessalines. We can handle Loverture. We can work with Loverture as long as he keeps his Dessalines guy in check and keeps him away from us. This is literally how these Negroes are thinking. 